アウラ自害しろ Freeran, you ever drunkenly stumble over to the toilet to piss when midstream you suddenly feel a wave of nostalgia wash over you, a certain appreciation of life that's often overshadowed by the hectic world we all find ourselves in, but because you're drunk and pissing in a remote location, everything just seems. All right. That's the feeling I get when watching Freeran Beyond Journey's End. An adaptation by Studio Madhouse, the story revolves around the titular character Freeran, an elven mage that's clearly over a thousand years old. She travels with Gimli, a regular from your local AA meetings, and the hero, Himel, on a journey to defeat the almighty Demon King. And they do. Although it takes them 10 years, they save the world with their names and likeness being immortalized across the land. With nothing left to be done, Freeran decides to leave and spend the next 50 years playing her favorite video game, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But instead of running around recovering lost memories, she's acquiring grimoires. Grim, grim, grimoires? Fuck. She just wants to make her boobs bigger. Remembering a promise she made, she returns to Himel's home only to find some three foot tall, creepy old guy who for sure has a distasteful collection of erotic fan fiction stuffed under his bed. In truth, what seems Like a brief trip around Hyrule to Freeran was an entire lifetime to the rest of the party. They're old now. The light that had once burned so bright was quickly coming to its end. Over her long, lonely existence, Freeran had watched countless people come and go from both her life and this world. She was used to this. She's never been able to truly come to understand humans. Their lives are magnitude shorter, so why even try? And yet, at the hero's burial, something strange happens. She finds herself crying. Unbeknownst to her, those 10 years, a mere drop in the bucket of her long life, had irrevocably changed her, setting up for her true journey. To attempt to understand humans, build genuine relationships, retrace the heroic party steps, and ultimately reach heaven, where she can talk to Himo one last time and put her regrets to rest. Keiichiro Saito is a dude that I think is one of the coolest dudes around. His directorial debut, Bochi the Rock, was an absolute mega hit featuring introspective. Of themes showcased through incredible character acting and creativity. I also made a pretty funny video on it that got copyright claimed, fuck my life. To say that he is quickly becoming one of my favorite talents in the industry would be an understatement, and his skill set slots in perfectly to this bad boy right here. Throw in acclaimed producers Yuichiro Fukushi and Takashi Nakame, who have numerous connections in both the theatrical and TV animation worlds, and you quickly realize that these three men had discreetly formed a super team. Top talent attracts top talent, and To say the results were anything less than immensely impressive would be doing it a disservice. This cut of Stark putting on his jacket is worth four, maybe five, seven deadly sins. Fern's swag walk and little sidestep gets me all hot and bothered every time I see it. This dance sequence is so obscenely smooth, I thought it was computer generated until I saw the line art on Twitter. Like, what? The level of skill possessed by this animation team oozes into every single frame of the show, and is honestly one of the most consistently impressive technical feats from a piece of televised anime I've seen in the past decade. I constantly find myself just sitting there thinking, did you really have to go that hard on normally mundane scenarios that would usually just serve as filler between key plot points? This also means they didn't have to overuse internal monologues to let the viewer know where the characters' heads are at, instead, opting to express most of their emotion through the The motion of the ocean. Like, look at this pout. She's clearly signaling for help with her back pain. You don't need someone to come and outright tell you that. It's a lively piece of animation that constantly has something to offer to the viewer, and that makes for a genuinely fun experience. Yet, to rave only about the brilliant animation would be doing Freeran a disservice. The world, the environment that the characters exist in, matters just as much as how they interact with it. The singular major theme that gives Freeran its narrative backbone is time. How it affects not only our main characters, And the way that they interact with one another, but also the toll it takes on the world around them. From the ancient forests to the rundown stone buildings and structures, the level of detail showcased through intricate and jaw dropping backgrounds serve to make the world feel like it's been around for a long, long time. They don't have to come out and say, damn, that shit old. You just look at it and understand. Unless you're dumb, or blind, or a fan of Taylor Swift. Or, I'm a sucker for pretty backgrounds. Not only do they make my eyes happy, but also possess the ability to help a viewer immerse themselves in a fictional world. Just from the bright and colorful settings, you can tell that this period of time after the evil Demon King is filled with a sense of peace and tranquility, fooling you into a false sense of security just in time for the story to cut your balls off. Just like the detailed animation and surroundings add to the legitimacy of this world, so too does the realistic depiction of regret, sorrow, and love felt by our main character. 
Time is a bitch, a sentiment that I'm sure most all of us can relate to. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, all of us only have so long until we have to move on. A certain sense of melancholy hangs over the entire series, as both we and Freeran understand that the bittersweet passage of time stops for no one, and everything has to come to an end someday. The thing is, due to her long life, at some point Freeran lost something extremely important an appreciation for the small things. While the major milestones are what we tend to remember, it's often the little bumps and joys we find along the way leading to said milestones that are truly important our most precious memories. And while she may not realize it, those 10 years with the guys were precious to her. As she begins to open herself up more to the world around her, not only does she become more vulnerable to things in the present, but also the actions and regrets of the past. Like, we get it, Hima was the Chad amongst Chads, the foreseen hero fated to single-handedly repopulate the dwindling elvish race. You don't have to remind us before every single episode that he is still dead. If that's not enough, Evan Call proceeds to slide through with a soundtrack that is simply sublime. He has a unique way of amplifying emotional moments, as evidenced by his phenomenal work on Violet Evergarden, and there are plenty of chances for his music to shine throughout the story. Maybe it's because I'm currently re-watching Lord of the Rings, but I can't stop making comparisons between the two soundtracks, which is a compliment in its own right. When you match it all together, it's a top-of-the-line adaptation for a beautifully relevant story. We all have or will have people in our lives that we'd do anything to be able to talk to once more. Freer and captures both the sadness of losing somebody you hold dear, but also the beauty of their memory, and the lasting impact that they have on not only their loved ones, but also the world around them. No matter how long we may live, it's the relationships we form with others that define our lives, what gives our time here meaning. Uh, don't watch this if you're adverse to crying, or do if you're into that sort of thing. I may just be a large child that cries at cartoons, but I can proudly admit I've teared up at damn near half of the episodes thus far. It's a culmination of story, directorial abilities, and artistic skill that you only see once in a blue moon, and I can't help but feel like I'm witnessing something special. Even if these types of shows aren't normally your cup of tea, if you are in any way a fan of the animation industry and not of Taylor Swift, this one is a must watch because Freerun Beyond Journey's End is incredible.